Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark with Thailand Unplugged. Back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up today. Thailand, the land of smiles and what's happening with the protests and what's it all about. I will give you a quick summary. Thousands protest in Thailand over delays in constitutional amendments. Chinese tycoon Ren gets 18 years after calling Xi Jinping a clown. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. And China again, they're very upset about TikTok. Once again, I'm Stephen Clark. Those and other stories coming up from the land of smiles and Southeast Asia. The land of smiles, protests and why and what is happening. An unprecedented wave of protests has swept across Thailand over recent months led by high schools and universities and students who are calling for major democratic reform. Some have also broken a long-standing taboo and risked prison sentences, demanding the power and wealth of the country's monarchy be curbed. The royal family has 40 aircraft at its disposal, and the king of Thailand's net worth is estimated to be 30 billion US dollars, which works out to about 942 billion a baht, nearly a trillion. Anyway, he makes him the wealthiest ruler in the world. And the uh, protesters want him to curtail a bit of his spending, especially during this current Chinese coronavirus and, and Thailand's economy looking more and more like an oncoming train wreck. So why have protests erupted now? Young people say they are fed up with the establishment that has undermined their democracy and rights and the country's progress. Demonstrations began at universities and campuses at the start of the year in response to a court order decision to dissolve Future Forward Party, a prominent opposition party. The party was especially popular among the young people during the last year's elections, a vote that was supposed to return Thailand to its democracy following the 2014 military coup but was instead marred by claims of irregularities and which critics say was skewed in favour of the army. The students want a real democracy. While Thailand has avoided a major Chinese coronavirus outbreak, the economical impact of the pandemic has been devastating and has highlighted the country's huge gaps in equality. Online anger among protesters increasingly targets the monarchy. In June, discontent flared further when it was reported that a pro-democracy activist, Wantalum Sik, had been abducted in Cambodia. Rights groups say he is the ninth exiled activist to disappear in recent years. The Thai government and military have denied involvement. So what do the protesters want? One of the protesters' slogans is, let it end with our generation. They're tired of the cycling of coups that has dominated Thailand's political history. Students are mostly united around calls for the dissolution of parliament and then the harassment of government critics and for changes to the military-backed constitution. Some have also called for reform to the country's powerful and wealthy monarchy, which they say is too close to the military military and in which they accuse them of interfering in politics. Is it illegal to criticise the king? Thailand's royal family is shielded from criticism by the strict Les Majest law that carries a sentence of up to 15 years, though the Prime Minister, Priyat Chinacha, has said the king requested that nobody be prosecuted under the law. But that doesn't stop nationals from pressing charges on other nationals, especially if they're protesters. And the Thai government's response to the demands. Prime Minister General Priyat Chinachar has said he will consider some of the protesters' demands regarding the constitution, but has said the monarchy would not be criticised. The Royal Palace has had no comment on the protest and the demands for reform. Rights groups say the authorities are attempting to contain the protest by arresting activists and by pressuring universities to do their bidding. So tell us what you think in the comments and please be nice. Thousands protest in Thailand over the delayed constitutional amendments. 
Thailand's parliament voted Thursday to delay deciding on whether it will amend the country's constitution and anti-government protesters continued to delay demonstrations they had been staging for more than two months, calling for more democracy and reform of the monarchy. Rather than vote on the amendment, lawmakers dominated by government supporters opted to set up a committee that will study various plans to amend the charter written by the military appointed panel after 2014 coup. Critics of the current government say the constitution was drafted to ensure the country's current prime minister remained in power after the election last year. The decision is expected to delay the process by another month, agitating thousands of protesters who gathered outside the parliament to put pressure on lawmakers to implement constitutional change and remove Prime Minister Priya Chinachar and former Janta leader from office. Thailand's King Rama X has not publicly commented on the protests that have dominated the monarchy power by reducing a movement that challenged decades-long taboo of not criticising the monarchy. Prime Minister General Priyat Achinacha has called for patience on the amendment, saying the country must be peaceful in order for the government to be able to continue our work, especially on the economy. Thailand. Time is up for some long-stay business owners as immigration warns of arrests after the upcoming deadline. There are those who find themselves in unexpected grey areas, through no fault of their own, that many with long-stay visas would normally never find themselves in. It had been thoroughly thought that some measure or path would be introduced by the government which would take into consideration the particular circumstances of this community who contribute greatly to the economy of Thailand in terms of investment, employment and tax but this has not happened so far. Closure of the Kingdom's Borders As the closure of the Kingdom's Borders has prevented expats from earning income regularly travelling outside the Kingdom while business owners with the visa in Thailand have seen their personal circumstances diminished to such an extent that many cannot comply with their normal conditions. The next few days for thousands of those people will be as stressful as they weigh up considering exiting Thailand to avoid ending up in the wrong side of the law while facing a highly uncertain future. Oh goody, a database to track down visa overstayers. A senior immigration bureau officer in Bangkok warns that the bureau would make sure of its live database to track down visa overstayers who failed to extend their visas as the Chinese coronavirus visa amnesty finally comes to an end. As well as over 150,000 tourists believed to be still in Thailand since January, there are also many small business people caught in peculiar circumstances who now have a matter of days to decide whether to leave their life in Thailand behind them and return home or see if they can find a solution to their predicament. They can no longer meet extension requirements because of the disruption of their business and diminishing financial circumstances. So what can they do? A 30-day extension is allowed on basis of obtaining a letter from the foreign embassy or consulate cannot get a flight back to their home country as there is no flights available or a medical certificate to suggest that they cannot travel because of ill health. Thousands of tourists may attempt to live illegally in Thailand. Yes, officers fear that many of the foreigners still in Thailand since January this year, even though nearly 70 million have since flown home, may not be fully aware of how serious their predicament is. An arrest by Immigration Bureau does not automatically mean that the offender will be sent home. In fact, what it means is the detention of the overstayer at the Immigration Detention Centre in Bangkok or at another holding facility such as a Thai prison, while the offender is afforded limited opportunity to pursue an arrangement at their own expense to get an airfare for the return trip home. In recent years, sadly, several foreigners have died while being held by immigration in this situation. So you really do not want to get into that situation. You know, there's a rumor going around that the Thailand Tourist Bureau is trying to get tourists back into Thailand. Anyway, tell us what you think in the comment section below. 
Do you think the Thailand immigration should be a little bit more lenient towards tourists and business owners they already have there before the new lot arrive? So tell us in those comments below where your next overseas destination will be. A business tycoon, Ren Chuchang, gets 18 years jail for calling Xi Jinping a clown. Six months after he called Xi Jinping a clown and criticized China's early handling of the Chinese coronavirus. The swift sentence of Ren Chuchang, once called China's Donald Trump for his brash style, was jailed for corruption, bribery and embezzlement of public funds, according to a court statement released on Tuesday. Ren Chuchang, who became known for speaking up about censorship and other sensitive topics, disappeared from public view in March after publishing an essay online that accused Xi Jinping of mishandling the outbreak that began in December in the central city of Wuhan. Xi Jinping Party clown since 2012, oh sorry, Xi Jinping Party leader since 2012 has suppressed criticism, tightened censorship and cracked down on unofficial organisations. Dozens of journalists, labourers and human rights activists and others have been imprisoned. Ren, 69, was convicted of corruption, bribery, embezzlement and public funds and abuse of power. Ren didn't mention Xing's name but said Standing there was not an emperor showing off his new clothes, but a clown who had stripped off his clothes and insisted on being an emperor. Ren criticised Xi Jinping and other leaders covering their mistakes with the disease without mentioning where it began and possible mistakes including suppressing information at the start of the outbreak. People didn't see any criticism at the conference. It didn't investigate and disclose the truth, Ren wrote. No one reviewed or took responsibility, but they are trying to cover up the truth with all kinds of great achievements. For making those statements and calling Xi Jinping a clown, he gets 18 years jail. Lucky he didn't call him a lion sack of poo, he would have got life. That's, that's what they call uh, Xi Jinping, uh, his nickname, Winnie the Pooh. He doesn't like it at all. And I believe all uh, Winnie the Pooh movies have been banned in China. He, he, do you reckon he looks like Winnie the Pooh or a clown? Okay, tell us what you think about that and leave your comments in the comments section below if you like. It'd be nice to hear from you. New charges against 16 leaders of the anti-government demonstration in Bangkok. Anti-government protesters and leaders pose for pictures while touching the plaque. Installed in the ground at Sanam Long in Bangkok on Sunday. Police are taking legal action against them. The plaque was dug up and removed on Sunday night. No one has admitted to it. The Metropolitan Police Bureau is preparing multiple charges against 16 leaders of the anti-government demonstration in Bangkok last weekend. Police Major General Sakan Sukhan Pramayan, Deputy Commissioner, said on Tuesday that the charge Charges would be brought against 16 key protesters who are in three groups. One group gathered the people who organised the demonstration without getting authorisation. The second group consisted of people who invited others to take part in the rally through all channels. The third group comprised of people who spoke from the demonstration stages. Police were transcribing the speeches, part of which were improper, he said. Bangkok police were also taking legal action against the demonstrators who installed a pro-democracy plaque in the grounds of Sanamlung Park on Sunday. This would include a complaint filed by the Fine Arts Department under the Ancient Monuments, Antiques and National Museum Act, which prohibits any changes to heritage areas, Police Major General Sakan said. Sanamlung is included in the Ancient Monuments and Museum law. The plaque was dug up and removed on Sunday night. No one has admitted to seeing who did it. China unveils rules on unreliable entities after Washington's TikTok ban. China issued a new regulation Saturday on its proposed list of unreliable entities, measures that punish foreign companies that Beijing says endangers its national sovereignty and security. According to a statement issued by the Commerce Ministry on its website, 
the rules which went into immediate effect include wide range of penalties included restricting trade and visas for any company organization or person that appears on what amounts to a blacklist the news came one day after the US issued an order that would restrict the US users access to Chinese owned TikTok and WeChat. The US argues the apps are security risks that gather data on American users. They are unable to protect that data from Chinese authoritarian government. Chinese Ministry of Commerce spokesman condemned the move against WeChat and TikTok saying the government wouldn't take necessary measures to protect legitimate interests of Chinese firms without elaborating security risks. China still relies heavily on US technology. It is still eager for US companies to invest in the country. This kind of tit-for-tat escalation only shows to its own people that the government does not succumb to American pressure.